Lockdown Sardo episode 8. Right, we've let our dough autolise for a bit more than that because we had supper in between doing the last bit. The great thing about sardo is you can just pace it out during the day and do other stuff. It's not like you have to keep an eye on it the whole time. First thing I'm going to do now is add a teaspoon and a quarter of salt. Um, I add in teaspoons the amount of cups I've used of water, that ratio. That's what I, works well for me. So that's one teaspoon and a quarter of a teaspoon. Don't add too much salt because it will inhibit the bacteria. And let's get back down into the pot and I'm going to stretch, fold this in. And you can see already that dough, since I last did anything with it, has become much more elastic and dough-like. It's much smoother now and that's because I just left it to rest for that hour or so. Right, that is not all mixed in, but it's mixed in enough for me to turn it out onto the work surface. Nice clean work surface, careful not to use detergent just before you do this on the work surface or any sort of antibacterial thing, even in the current climate, or you will kill your dough. Uh, now, you might have your own kneading method. Um, there's so many different ways of doing this. You can do this. What I'm trying to do is whoopsie, stretch stretch the dough to get the, the gluten elongated, to get nice long strands. Um, I tend to do more of this sort of slappy thing and pull it. Oh, it's not sticking. There we are. Whoa. There we go. Trying to do it in front of the camera. Changes the whole complexion of the thing, but getting those long strands by pulling it like that, what we're trying to do. So you don't really want to use the heel of your hand to do this because again, you'll just end up in a mess. I'm just basically using two fingers on each hand to do this. And it keeps the rest of the hands quite clean and dry. I'm just going to scrape off. And it's good. as I, more I stretch it, the softer it becomes. Some people also need in the air, they do sort of thing, air kneading, you can do that too. It doesn't really matter, there's not uh, no right way and there's no wrong way of doing this. Um, and some people don't need at all. I've made many loaves where I just fold it in the bowl and that's quite a popular method. But uh, I think this is more reliable. And you'll start to feel the dough Comes smooth, really elastic. You can see how long the strands are becoming. Also losing my breath. <laughs> uh, there we are. I think we're nearly done. It's not doesn't need a lot of kneading after that autolise. You can tell that it's going to behaves pretty well. There is a thing called a window test where you can check to see whether it's not quite there yet but I'm just going to do this a little bit longer and then I'm going to let it rest on the surface for about 20 minutes and that'll make it firm up again and uh, then we'll be ready for the last stage which will be the shaping. I'm just going to fold it into a water bowl.
Yeah, that's been it up like a dough now. As I say, it's very soft. You might find this a bit of a surprise if you're used to a heavy yeasted dough. Right, I think that'll do. I'm just gonna dust a little flour on the top. Just to seed it off a bit. And we'll stop there and I'll come back in about 20 minutes to shape the loaf. See you soon. Bye.